great brother in the Lord. I don't call him just youth pastor here by any means. He is more than that. He is a full-blown pastor here at Journey Church. He has a heart after God like no one that you can imagine. He's made such a huge difference in the life of Journey Church and in my life personally. He is a prayer warrior. He is a real-life superhero. Would you welcome Pastor Brinson to the stage today? Come on, Brinson. Not just a comic book superhero like in his office, but have fun. Real life. Thanks, Pastor. No pressure. Real life superhero. I like, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm, I'm a superhero to parents who need a three-hour break on Wednesdays. <laughs> First, I want to give uh, honor to God, and I want to give honor to the angel of this house, Pastor Eric and Mary Jo. Amen. Great pastors, love, <laughs> journey, church. Amen. Give honor to all the pastors, Pastor Kevin in the back, one of, one of the most brilliant minds I've ever met. He is giving our kids the love of Jesus in a way we can't do it, because he's a tad bit smarter than all of us, maybe, okay? Pastor Adam is just killing worship, amen? First service, I, I don't know if he did it this service, but I knew the worship was real. He had the earplugs out. I said, uh-oh, Jesus is here. The earplugs are out. And Pastor Don, if you're watching, we love you, brother. We cannot wait to see you back in the fold. He had a small operation, and he will be back in a few weeks. And when he come back, I owe you five guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Five guys. Praise God for five guys. And if, there, if, if there's leaders in Remix, would you stand up for a second? Just for a second. Just leaders of Remix. Really leaders. Amen. 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 So, these people who are standing up, they had a hard week. We threw a Christmas party this week, and last night, we went to Gainesville with all of these teenagers, and we had three vans full of wildness, to say the least. But I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. You are awesome. You are great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I couldn't do this ministry without you guys. You are loved. You are blessed. You are awesome. So thank you. Thank you. So before I pray, I, you ever been to church and you, you've seen those preachers there get up and be like, the devil been fighting me all week to get this message. And you know, I used to sit in those seats and I was like, I'm sure. But this week, Jesus. So this message, I wrote this message maybe three times, and they all got erased. So I was talking to the brilliant Pastor Kevin, and we just had a conversation. I said, like, Pastor Kevin, I just wrote the, the sermon for the third time. And he looked at me, he was like, well, maybe God is telling you that it sucked. <laughs> And without having offense, I was like, well, maybe he's right. I was like, maybe it did suck, you know. I was like, I'm only awesome like 364 days. This might be that one day that it's just over, you know. So I said, well, God, I got all these scriptures. And I'm like, oh, we're going to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, apparently I don't know what I'm doing. I said, God, what, what, what is it that you want me to say? And in that very instant, that instant that I said amen, he dropped it on me. He said, you've been saying all of this, and that's great. This is what I want you to say. So let's get into what the Lord wants me to say. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, bless your name. Thank you for Journey Church. Thank you for this time that we can share your word. God, thank you that you are amazing. God, I decrease as you increase. Speak through my mouth. Speak through these vocal cords. 
think through my mind. We come against all distractions of the devil, of Satan. We plead the blood of Jesus against it. No weapon formed against this service shall prosper. Every heart is good ground to receive. Every ear is anointed to hear the word that will be preached. And God, speak the hearts today. Speak the minds. Mend relationships. Have your way in this place, your house. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 This is a this is a anointed season. It's a it's a good season. Season of giving. Season where we could feel God. And one great thing about this season is Star Wars is coming out Thursday. <laughs> I'm going to enter the theater with a praise on my lips, with joy in my heart. And when I walk out after seeing two hours of greatness, I will look at the people standing in line and say, Jesus is Lord, and I'm going to spoil this movie. Luke is on the dark side. So I, it's going, it's something great is going to happen. But this message today, we're talking about in the This Is Us series, bridging the gap with teens through reconciliation. Bridging the gap with teens through reconciliation. How many of you know there is a gap? Yeah. Grandparents are saying, oh yes, it is. But even if you don't have a teen, reconciliation, you can use it and apply these principles anywhere you go. Last week, Pastor Kevin started with this scripture, and I'm going to go back to, you, to it as well. Matthew 22, and it says, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. One thing we don't think about when we think about neighbor is we don't think about our teens as our neighbor, right? Because they came out of us. That's your son, that's your daughter. No, 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 no. They're on lease from God to you. That's still your neighbor. You still have to love them as yourself. You know, this is one of the most difficult times in life is being a teenager. We know, you, you remember when you was a teenager, everybody was crazy. Your parents was tripping. You knew it all. Still do. It was just a crazy moment in time. They're trying to find their identity. They're growing up. Their bodies are changing. They want to be treated like adults, but have fifth grade tendencies. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what another hard time in life is? Not being a teen, but being a parent of a teenager. Somebody should have ran around the church right there. <laughs> Thank you, God! Yep. Being a parent of a teenager is hard because you got this person who have a grown body. You want to relate to them like an adult, and then you just like, the lights aren't on in this house. <laughs> like, what don't you get? But we can't look at this the body form, and think they get it. And then you're like, man, I finally got some help around the house. And then you're like, you're no good. <laughs> what are you doing? But you got to love them as you love, their, as you love yourself. And a great man told me this. Bridging the gap 
And this is not just with teenagers, but with anybody. You got to sit where that person sat. Yes, sir. One thing we do as adults, we look at situations through the lens of experience. They haven't had these experiences yet. When, when, when the girl get her heart broken, and we're like, <laughs> over a boy? Girl, they will come a dime a dozen. You'll find one next week. <laughs> but they haven't experienced that yet. If their heart break, you got to sit where they're sitting. Your heart should break too. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Sit where they're sat, sitting. You got to remember the first time you had your heart broken. The first time one of your best friends lied on you and how much that hurt. You know, when you're in your, like your 30s, 40s, 50s, one of your friends lie on you, you're like, it happens. <laughs> they ain't saved anyway. <laughs> this just means taking the time to understand them where they are. And that comes with listening. Teens don't want to open up because we, they, don't, they don't feel like they're being listened to. And a lot of times they're talking gibberish. But sometimes you have to filter through the gibberish. Give them at least eight minutes. On the eighth minute, if it's still gibberish, you just shut, off, shut it off like the magic words. Go to your room. But under, one, one day I prayed, and I asked God for an understanding heart. I said, God, help me to understand. Help me to discern what people are really saying under what they're saying. Because teenagers, a lot of times, don't know how to articulate feelings yet. Men don't either. <laughs> don't, if, you, if you sit next to your husband, just look at me. <laughs> just, just, just look. Don't, don't say amen too loud. You'll be too obvious. Amen, honey. We don't. It's fine. We, I mean, we, we don't need to articulate feelings. We, we're men. Help us, Jesus. Technology is changing. The things that the teens are going through now, we didn't have to go through when we was a teenager. We didn't have Facebook like that. We didn't have Snapchat. Bullying is different. Relationships are different. But the results are the same. A broken heart is a broken heart. Betrayal is betrayal. Crazy teachers are still crazy teachers. And teachers, I'm not beating up on you. Crazy students are crazy students. Amen, somebody. Amen. Ephesians says this. This is one of the parents' greatest scriptures. Children, teenagers, ha ha, you can preach this home. Obey, ha. Your parents, whoo, in the Lord. For this is. This is, right. teenagers, teenagers are like, no, <laughs> honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you in school, in college, in the future, and that you may live long in the land. We love that scripture as parents, right? But there is a flip side, because the scripture is a double-edged sword. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. We, somebody, I'm going to lose some friends right here. We want to get the answers on why are our kids acting so rebellious? Well, I'll help you. Pastor Eric says things. To you, like you say to your children. You say, clean your room, clean your room, clean your room. Pastor Eric, stay out of sin, stay out of sin, stay out of sin. And we're like, why are they not listening to us as parents? Why aren't you listening to your spiritual parent? Leave that over there. Somebody got real mad. Don't say that to me. Okay. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of 
the Lord. It's not easy to discipline in the Lord if you don't know what Scripture says about parenting. It's not easy to instruct in the Lord if you don't know what God's instructions are. You may be the only model of a Christian your child sees. The only model. So we have to be careful on how we act at home. We have to be careful how we talk in the car leaving church. Because if we leave the church talking about everybody we see, our kids are going to be like, this God thing ain't real because you're not real. If we go home and fight like animals and come to church and take communion, throw the communion, <clears throat> and we, we fist bump our spouse, I killed that communion. You saw that? Woo! And we go home and we treat our spouse like a dog, our kids are going to look at us like, man, how is Jesus real? You taking me to church and you don't even know what Jesus looked like. God forbid we bring him on Wednesday nights to help him. I can say this stuff. My name ain't on the door. Pastor Eric, y'all got to. <laughs> Don't send Pastor Eric no nasty emails. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 in another translation says this. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Even though they look grown, their chest sticking out, they get musky like a grown person. Amen, somebody. Because we know a teenager, if they run the wrong way and they walk past us, oh! I said, hold the onions. Do not exasperate them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial or unreasonable, or humiliating. Don't humiliate your kid or be abusive. We can't abuse these teens because you know why? They're going to inherit that. We want our teens to be better than us, right? They're the next church. They're the next church. They're the future husbands, future wives. They're looking at what we're doing. The only model that they have is what they see at home. We can preach to them all day, but they're going to look at you because they trust you more than they trust us. We have to sit where they sit. We got to understand that their life is hard too. Women go through heartbreak. Your daughters are going to go through heartbreak. What they need is not a resentful answer. Oh, that boy, that, b listen, boys are dumb. They all, look, none of them are faithful. They're never loyal. They don't need that. Does the word say that? They need to know how God mended your heart back together. They, want, they need to know the scriptures that you use. That scripture that you anchored your soul in to bring you back from a broken heart, to bring you back from a betrayal of a friend. What did the Lord give to you? How much did you have to pray to get over this hump? That's what you need to model. You know some of the greatest things that a, a teen can see, a child can see? Let them walk in on you while you're praying. Let them walk in on you while you are laying hands on, on your spouse saying, Father, touch them. Let them catch you reading the word and getting the gym out like, man, this is so good. Let them walk in on you giving God a praise when he did something good for you. One thing that I saw from my mom, she, no matter what, she stayed in church. Things going good, things going bad, she stayed in church. That was my model. My, my son, we were, we were eating the other night and, uh, you know, being one of the pastors, you get the report. So when someone gets hurt at the church or if we got to go to a hospital visit, anything like that. And a, a dear brother hurt himself putting up Christmas lights. Watch out, man. And I was like, oh, my God. And I said it pretty loud. He said, what is it, Dad? 
I said, brother, blah, 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 hurt himself. He said, where? I said, on the, in his ribs. And he said, where are your ribs? I said, it's the place where I tickle you. You're like, oh, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. touch him. Put your healing hand on him. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Woo! So the beginning of the prayer, I'm like, oh my God, we got no apostle Paul at this table. And at the end of the prayer, I said, where did Rick Flood come from? I said, I don't even let you watch wrestling. How you know about this Rick Flood? Woo! I said, I said, did you feel it, son? Did you feel him? Is he real? He said, mm-hmm. But what, what that showed me is he see his daddy pray at the drop of a hat. Amen. Drop of a hat, I'm praying. Why wait? This la the, last, the last part of this thing, it said, fathers, don't exasperate your children by coming down hard on them. Take them by the hand. Lead them in the way of the master. That's what teens need. They don't need the iron fist. They need a hand being held to lead them in the way of the master. Amen. When the people on your job trip and act the fool and you like, coffee ain't gonna stop this because y'all are lost y'all mind this week. <laughs> I done had quadruple espresso shots and it's still not helping. They need to see what you do. They need to see you praying for that coworker. Because I get a lot of teens come in, come in my office and say, you know what, I'm going through it in school. These people are acting crazy in my classroom. I'm trying not to fight. The same things that happen to you at work happen to them in school. Because you're telling your girlfriend, girl, she just don't know the clap back is about to be real. <laughs> and they're saying the same thing to me in, the, in my office. Second period, the clap back was about to be real, Pastor Brent. So, like, they don't know I was about to give them everything and a bag of chips. And I was going to cuss. I know, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Calm down. <laughs> Let's see what Jesus will do. And then they'll get smart because they didn't read a little bit. Well, Jesus flipped the table over. No. No, 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 no. One thing in Bridging the Gap, we got to know that we can correct any wrong with God's help. We can correct any wrong in parenting. Maybe you haven't been the best parent hearing this message, at, but listen, yes, you have. You have done what you know how to do. But anything you need to correct, you can correct it with God's help. It may take a while. And it's a lot of people here who don't even talk to their parents. Guess what? With God's help, we can correct it. How do I know this? Because bridging any gap with reconciliation. Second Corinthians says this, for the love of Christ controls who? The love of Christ controls who? Because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for who? Themselves, but for him who for their sakes died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. We don't regard these teenagers according to the flesh, even though they can be in the flesh. We need to regard them as our neighbor, as the future church, as a lease from God, as somebody who God is going to use in the future. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if any parent, grandparent, teen, is in Christ, he is a new creature. I don't parent the same way. I can't parent how I used to parent when I wasn't living for Christ. I can't be the same wife, husband, co-worker that I used to be because now I'm in Jesus. 
I can't be the same person. I can't discipline you the same because I got the Word of God in me. I got to give you scripture to let you know how God feel about it, then I feel about it, and then I don't have to spare the rod because the Bible says I got to drive the foolishness out of the heart of a child. I got whooping scriptures. If you don't whoop your kids, I got them if you need them. I got them. Behold, all things become new. All this is from God. Who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave, somebody say gave. Gave gave us the ministry. You have a ministry of reconciliation. You can't connect with your team. God has given you power to do it. We got to go to the source. We got to go to the Holy Spirit. What is too hard for God? Yes, connecting with teens is hard because they are crazy. (laughs) Zay. Zay. And guess what? Your parents thought she was crazy too. Now you 80s babies, you know you wanted your big hair, fanny pack, looking like Cindy Lobster, singing Madonna like a virgin, and your parents looked at you like, are you nuts? And this generation, you like, what is a 21 Savage? <laughs> what is a little pump? What's a little pump? What's a young thug? Who? Yachty? What's a yachty? Don't play that mess in my car. We looking at them, how they looked at us. It's, it's, it's the same thing. It's just a different generation. And in your generation, what did you want? You wanted somebody to understand you. You wanted somebody to listen to you. You wanted somebody to have a broken heart when you had a broken heart. That's all they need. Somebody with an understanding heart who has the ministry of reconciliation. It shouldn't be any relationship in your life that can't be mended. God didn't save you to keep you in broken relationships. I'm going to come over here and say, y'all didn't want to hear that. I'm going to say this over here. (laughs) God didn't save you for your relationships to stay broken. It said Christ reconciled all of us to himself. And sometimes we got to forgive our teens for acting crazy. We got to forgive them. And And I know it's hard because you're like, I've told you this a million times. Stop hitting your sister. (laughs) Forgiveness is something that reconciliation, they go hand in hand. You know, because we're coming into a new year and a lot of people want to lose weight. Amen, somebody? A lot of weight. Some of us just like, Jesus just cut me in half. (laughs) Split me and have the real me and the fat sell me. Just, but you know what weight we need to lose? We need to lose the weight of unforgiveness. We need to lose the weight of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness And the people in our home, the people with our last names, I know Christmas is coming. You're going to see the same people you've seen in Thanksgiving, and you are dreading it. You shouldn't. They need to see the light of Christ in you. They need to know that this God is real. They need to know that old things have passed away. How can the scriptures be fulfilled in us when we're still holding on to old things? And I know what you're saying. Well, I passed the branch and you wasn't there. It was killing me. Everything they did. I want you to remember Jesus. While they were killing Jesus, while they was murdering Jesus, while they were spitting on Jesus, while they were smacking on Jesus, while they nailed his hands, 
while he was up on the cross, naked, bruised, beaten beyond recognition, while he was bleeding, while blood was dripping from every part of his body, he looked up to God while they was murdering him and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I don't see nobody in here with nail prints. If Jesus, at the most agonizing point of his life, the most painful moment of his earthly existence, was able to forgive in that moment of time, what's wrong with us? I want you to compare your worst. Compare your worst to his worst. Compare your pain to his pain. Matter of fact, his pain was for you. Whatever you've been through, he took it up on that cross so you can have the power to forgive. That's why he said, I gave it to you. I gave my life. He gave his life to give you the power to reconcile any relationship in your life. He gave you power. It said he rose with all power. And when he rose with all power, he left that pain behind. And when we are a new creature in Christ, we're supposed to leave pain behind. The scripture, you know what you need to do? Sometimes we need to war with ourselves, war against Satan. I'm going to tell you this. This is for free. This is one of my life. If I, if I was a dude who get tattoos, this would be on my back. You can't defeat a thought with a thought. So when you're around your family, when you're around that teenager who gets on your first nerve, second nerve, last nerve, and that person we call the devil start bringing up their old stuff, I want you to look at him and tell him old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm not going to do the things that's against the word of God. You know what the word of God says? It said love keeps no record. Amen. Love keeps no record. I'm not going to keep a record of what they did. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to teach them in the admiration of the Lord. I'm going to grab them by the hand, like that scripture said, and lead them in the ways of the master. You know what forgiving parents are, have? Forgiving children. You know what praying parents have? Praying children. You want your child to be better than you? Give them the best part about you, the Word of God. Amen. Give them the best part about you, the Word of God. You know why? Because God knew who he was giving you when he gave it to you. And, I, and one of the core values, where are my teens? Teens, make some noise. Somebody give me a core value. One prayer away. What else? What else? The Bible is live. What else? Say that again. God knows what's best for you. My God, they listening. Somebody email Pastor Eric for a raise. They listening. God knows what's best for you. Psalm says this. Behold, children are heritage and a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. If we look at our teens as a gift, if we look at them as this is a reward from the Lord. Like I, I look at my son like that. I said, this dude loves 80s music. Jackpot! <laughs> I said, if this dude loves tears for fears, I am. I, listen, I'm good. I'm going to heaven. My son likes tears for fears. Y'all know. The youth like, what's tears for fears? Something great. Amen. 
He said it's a gift from God. I, I look at my son as a gift. You need to look at your children as a gift. Even though they have fifth grade tendencies, they are a gift. Because one day, you don't know where God is going to take them, and they're going to tell stories about how good God was and how God used their parents to show them God, how God used their parents to teach them how to pray. My mom taught me how to pray. And I know, you know how I know God knows what's best for me? Because when I was a teenager, I thought, when I thought I knew everything, I couldn't figure out why she wouldn't leave my dad. I'm like, this dude, he's an alcoholic. He just... We can't talk to him. Why are you still here? Leave him. Don't you love yourself enough to leave this man? I was looking through the lens of somebody who never loved God and had a relationship from, with Jesus. She was looking through the lens of my God always comes through. I seen her pray year after year after year after year on her knees, and she would say, I don't care what you say, son. You respect your dad, and you pray for him too. Amen. Then one day, Jesus showed up. He called me out of the blue talking about the Holy Spirit this, the Holy Spirit that. And, and keep in mind, I only seen my dad in church one time in my life. I'm looking at my phone like, I got to be getting pranked. Who is this? But God turned his life around. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. The prayers of the righteous are strong. The prayers of the righteous make a difference. So if the pro so, 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 I ask you, Journey, don't you get mad at me and send Pastor Eric no nasty email. If the prayers of the righteous work, are you not praying? Are you not righteous? We can bridge these gaps. Just take a little bit of word, a little bit of prayer, a whole lot of Jesus. A whole lot of Jesus. The Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And if that greatness is in you, let your team see the greatest part of you, the world of God. This series is called This Is Us. We forgive. That's how we reconcile. Forgive them for the things they did. Forgive those coworkers. Forgive these parents. Forgive the ones. Teens, forgive your parents. Amen? Amen. You're not paying bills yet. And when you finally do, you're going to be like, huh. if, that, if I was my mom, I would have been killed me. <laughs> I would have threw me out took me to the Salvation Army and said, he is for sale. <laughs> Matter of fact, free. You don't understand your parents, you don't have to, you got to love them. If you don't understand, say that prayer that I prayed. God, give me an understanding heart. Give me an understanding heart. When you sit where people sit, it's easier to pray for them. Yes, sir. It's easier to forgive them. And it's easier to reconcile. You have the greatest thing ever. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside of you. It's nothing in your relationships. It's nothing in your world that's too hard for God to put back together again. Amen. The Bible said, when you got say, he said, I gave you a new heart. You used to have a heart of stone. You got a new heart. Your mind is renewed by the word of God. So if my mind is renewed, I'm not going to react the same way I used to. You can say crazy things to me, but you know what? I know the same God that saved me can save you. I want you in heaven the same or just as much as I want myself. I, I wrote a song. I said, I want all my haters to go to heaven with me. Amen. 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 So during this holiday season, pray and know that you have the ministry of reconciliation. Everyone, stand to your feet.
If you would, would you bow your heads, close your eyes? As the scripture talking about how God reconciled us to him through his, through his death, burial, and resurrection. Some people in here may not be saved. And I'm not asking you to join the church. Guess what? The, you, the Lord knew that you were going to show up to this church today. God don't make mistakes. Right. And this is the day that he wants you to come home. So while all heads are bowed, eyes are closed, if you never received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and you know this is your day, I just want you to lift your hands up around this building. Just lift that hand up. Amen. And another call, if you've fallen falling down, you're not living this life like you know you should be living it, and you feel like you've been separated from the Lord and you just want to reconcile your relationship with God, I want you to lift your hand also. Amen. Amen. And one more step for those who lifted their hands while all these People, our eyes are closed. I just want you to take that bold step out and just come to the front. We're going to have people to pray with you. We are not going to embarrass you at all. We want to love you back to life. So if you raise your hand, would you slip out of those rows? The people will let you by. They, they're not, no, we're not, amen, amen, amen. She's coming up. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And one more, one more. If you don't have a church home, if you are a serial visitor with commitment issues, would you join during the church today? If, this, if you come here and it feels like home every time you enter these doors, then it is home. Amen. And maybe this is your day to join the church. So all those things, you can come on up, and we're going to pray out. And we happy we got our sister back this morning. Amen. Amen. We, we love her so much. Amen. So let's pray all over the building. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this word. Thank you, God. We pray that the seed that was planted in the hearts today for reconciliation, we pray for that harvest to spring up 30, 60, 100 fold in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now that favor on the jobs of everyone. God, we pray favor in relationships, favor with parents to children, children to parents, Parents with grandparents, God, we just, we just pray that our families are put back together, God. We know you want us whole, complete, healthy. God, we know there is nothing incomplete in you. Help us to be whole in you, Jesus. Help us to embrace our loved ones and our friends, God. We know our time is short. short. Keep us to number our days that we may walk in wisdom. And God, bless this church. Bless the members of Journey. God, that they, when they see you, they can say, well, you can tell them, well done, our good, faithful servant. And God, as we leave this place and not your presence, have your hands upon us, your angels surround us as the mountains surround Israel. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.